Richard, you came just in the nick of time. There was almost a brawl in the newsroom over pizza and, and, and pineapple and Hawaiian and Canadian. We'll get to that in a minute. How are you? I'm good. Back from a, a four-day weekend, so trying to get back in the, the swing of things. How are you doing? Good, good. Did you do anything fun? No, I did a whole lot of nothing, to be perfectly honest with you, which was very nice. So, uh, no, nothing too exciting. How was your uh, long weekend? Yeah, it wasn't long, but thanks for asking. Yeah, I worked right. on Monday. That's right. I watched you at Monday, on Monday. That's what I did. I, I was home watching you. I celebrated with my work family. Well, that's nice. Listen, we know that a lot of, uh, speaking of traveling and not traveling, a lot of people are coming to this country because of, uh, well, the loony and Donald Trump. What's the tourism boom all about? Yeah, so we heard from Stats Canada, and uh, they said that 30.1 million visitors came to our country to, to visit in 2016 and that was a jump of 10 percent over 2015 so we're seeing kind of a tourism boom here at, with 13.6 um, percent uh, increase from overseas travelers and an 8.3 percent increase in travelers from the U.S. Certainly the currency is the major attraction a very favorable exchange rate the loony closing today at about 76 cents U.S. higher than where it was a year ago today but certainly a uh, well off its five-year high of more than a dollar U.S. which we had in September of 2012. And the other emerging factor, Avery, is indeed Donald Trump, with many uh, international travelers, many Canadians perhaps reluctant to go to the U.S. because of the looming travel ban or simply just because of a protest against Trump's policies. All right, so we've been hearing about this from all over the world, but now you at UPS is really talking about doing a testing of drones to deliver? Yeah, all sorts of companies want to figure out how to use drones. And take a look at this. UPS is testing this new method whereby a UPS drone would uh, launch from the top of a UPS truck. So you'd have the driver load the package into the drone and it would take off from the roof. And uh, the human driver then, Avery, would go off and make more deliveries while the drone drops off the package. So the idea is for the drone and the human to work in tandem to deliver packages more efficiently and, and faster. And this would be especially useful in rural areas where, you know, homes are further apart. UPS said if they implement this, they could save $50 million per year. So you're seeing all sorts of companies now trying to figure out how to use those aerial drones. Well, I was going to say useful in rural or only of it useful in your rural because I can't imagine all these drones flying around downtown Toronto either. Yeah, hitting a skyscraper or telephone lines or what have you. But it'll be interesting to see how they figure out those little details, Avery. All right. Well, you were mentioning this earlier, but now it's official. Tim Hortons uh, is going to buy Popeye's chicken. This deal, though, uh, just the beginning. It could be. So we had this uh, deal uh, coming out officially yesterday. Restaurant Brands International, which owns Tim Hortons and Burger King, uh, buying Popeye's chicken, uh, more than a billion dollar deal. And, you know, restaurant sales, they're pretty flat here in North America. So restaurant brands looking to grow through acquisition. There's been speculation that other takeover targets or the next ones could be perhaps Dairy Queen or Subway Subs. Now, Subway is a massive company. It has more outlets than even McDonald's does. A lot of penetration. And that would be a big deal. But Subway has struggled in recent years. So that's why it's sort of coming up here as a potential takeover target for Tim Horton's parent company. Uh, this uh, particular entity, Restaurant Brands, what they do, they buy these companies, Avery, and they slash costs to try and drive up profits. Uh, they were uh, very uh, notable for taking away the free coffee at Tim Horton's headquarters when they bought Timmy's. So we'll see who's next here. All right, I need your voice of reason on this pineapple debate. Uh, Amar Sodi, who can never stop talking about food, actually is relishing the fact that he got to come and get right in here and say hi, hi to Richard. Hi, Richard. <laughs> hey, Amar. Um, he is so excited to be able to buy pizza. I have to admit, if you go in really close, you can see I've already kind of nibbled a little bit out of it. Um, first of all, I'm only now learning. Well, we, we should start by saying the president of Iceland is saying that uh, that there should there's no place for pineapple on top of pizzas. I did yeah. not know that this was a Canadian invention. It's a Canadian invention. Uh, pineapple or Hawaiian pizza was first baked up in Chatham, Ontario back in 1962. And yeah, the, the president of Iceland said he uh, denounced pineapple on pizza and he said he would ban it in Iceland if he had the power <laughs> to do so. It's super controversial, uh, and it actually only represents, Avery, 8% of all uh, pizzas sold in uh, Canada. They're only 8% are pineapple. What's your opinion on it? Maybe we should try it and see well, what we think. Well, all that's echoing in my ears is our newsroom superstar, Espe, saying you don't heat fruit. And I kind of I kind of agree with that, but I'm not going to let... The pineapple will not go to waste, is all I'm saying. I might pick the odd one off, but I, why do they call it Hawaiian if it was made in Canada? 
Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's sort of uh, pineapple, I guess, kind of of a Hawaiian type of topping. That's what a lot of people say, that you don't want fruit on pizza. My opinion is that it's a pizza of last resort. You know, if you go into the pizza shop late at night and there's a bunch of dry slices, you're going to have to go for the Hawaiian because it's going to provide that moisture content, Avery. Ah, I like the way you think. Well, I'm going to say this is cut in two, so I'm saving one of these for you, not the one with the bite already taken out. Uh, let's talk about Judge Judy. She's already the highest paid TV star, but uh, she's looking at even more money. And she's eating something a bit fancy than Hawaiian pizza. She makes $47 million a year, Avery, and as part of her recent uh, contract renegotiation, she got the rights to her back catalog of shows, and she's trying to sell that for $200 million. Wow. She has this type of leverage because she gets 10 million viewers a show, very good indeed, and experts say that she could indeed sell this back catalog for top dollar because streaming companies like Netflix, they're looking for bulk type of popular shows like that. So Judge Judy, net worth of about $290 million, and she's going to perhaps get even richer than that. All right, I'm uh, saving this till it's really dried out, and then you need, can have it when you're hungover one day. It's going to be in my top drawer. Just go for it. Cheers, Avery. Thanks. Thanks, Richard.